with great power comes great responsibility. To make great Spider-Man movies, of course. Lucky for us, we've gotten a lot of them over the years. It was stupid, but it was great. Well, minus an Andrew Garfield here and an emo Peter Parker there. Yep, people just can't seem to get enough of that friendly neighborhood web slinger on the big screen. Can't you just be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man? But I'm ready for more than that now. Which begs the question, why have they not taken a swing at adapting perhaps the most enigmatic version of Spider-Man out there? My name is Peter Parker. No, not Spider-Ham, although I'm talking about Spider-Man 2099. Now I assume it's only a matter of time before the wall crawler of the future spins his way into cinemas, but who's to say they get it right when they so often get it wrong? Don't yeah. get too excited, Miguel. It's just a prototype. Not excited. But you could be the first person to make an autonomous multiverse jump. Or the last. Okay, so we're just gonna roll the dice on this? I'm Mr. Hollywood Matt Demers, professional film critic and all-around pop culture aficionado, and today I'm joining Watch Mojo to deliver the ultimate Spider-Man 2099 live-action movie blueprint. So what do you say, pal? Where do you want to go first? Let's start at the beginning one last time. The cast. It's safe to say that no other aspect of a movie gets people as excited or riled up as the casting. I mean, just ask that Batman guy. Now in this story, set in the far off future of Earth 928, the Spider-Man mantle is taken up by Miguel O'Hara, a geneticist who, after a sabotaged experiment, ends up with 50% spider DNA. Uh, gross? You're Spider-Man, but you're... who are you? Are, are you me? And what's up with the costume? Is that a metallic fiber? <laughs> Given he's our titular hero and all, Miguel is no doubt the most important role of the movie. And while there are lots of factors that need to be considered for this particular casting, it's important that whoever it is fully represents the character's Hispanic heritage. No Hollywood whitewashing here, folks. You're not a Ra's al Ghul. I watched him die. But is Ra's al Ghul immortal? With that in mind, there are more than a few actors I could see tackled apart with gumption. One being J.D. Pardo, star of the Sons of Anarchy spinoff Mayans MC, and all-around cool guy. No one third your pops. Who are you? I just want to talk to him. No worries. But while Pardo definitely has the physicality down, let's face it, his rough him up biker persona doesn't make for a very convincing geneticist. If we are going strictly on looks, then singer and actor Diego Benetta more than fits the bill. But he lacks a certain action star presence. Maybe if Miguel was a rock star? Gotta keep gotta make it to the top. And yes, while I can certainly hear your cries for teen wolf heartthrob Tyler Posey, I ultimately reject them in favor of David Castaneda. And here we go. Fans of Netflix's Umbrella Academy already know why David is the ideal choice. He's charismatic, endearing, more than a little rebellious, and has a cunning street smart side to him. And surprise, surprise, Dad's death was normal. There's no doubt in my mind that with Castaneda in the suit, Spider-Man 2099 would be the badass hero of the future we need him to be. You got enough material for your sequel yet? Now on to the love interest of the story, or in this case, the wife. Yep, in Spider-Man 2099, Miguel O'Hara is actually married to his childhood best friend, Xena Kwan. Also given the gift of intellect, Xena is way smart, loving and always encouraging of Miguel. You know what they say, behind every great man is a great woman. And while there are lots of great choices for Xena, the likes of Constance Wu, and Lyrica Okano. There's perhaps no one greater for this role than Christine Ko. Oh my God, you're a legend. I can't believe you're here. Best known for her turns on the CBS sitcom The Great Indoors and Hawaii Five-0, Christine brings a great deal to each part she tackles, be it sweet sensibility or a certain measured control. And there's no doubt she would do just the same as Mrs. Spider-Man 2099. But what about the other woman in Miguel's life? You know, is holographic assistant Lila, or Lyrate life form approximation? You're a bit late. We can't all be everywhere at once. Little text might have been nice. Yeah, that one. Well, given Lila is artificial intelligence, there's no need to be held to the whole the actor must look exactly like the character argument. After all, Lila's voice matters the most here, 
and it's up to those magical special effects wizards to create the Marilyn Monroe inspired rest. So just who in Hollywood has got the vocal chops to make Lila a true standout? Why none other than one of the most uniquely sounding stars there is, Rihanna. My name's Debbie. Name Ball. What's your real name? Eight Ball. With a voice that is soft and warm, but strong and assertive when it needs to be, Rihanna would give Lila a super fun edge, making her a surefire crowd pleaser every time she appears with a message for our hero. Hey, boo. Bonus points if on one occasion she reminds Miguel to bring his umbrella. Hope I ain't around when that day comes. And finally, what would a movie be without its big bad? We are them. For this instance, the best villain for the job is Kron Stone. Kron factors into Miguel's personal life. Shh, he's his secret half-brother. And he also finds himself tangled up in the usual bad guy stuff. You know, like mass killings and so forth. Oh yeah, I should probably mention he's the Venom of the future. So with lots to be brought to the table, there are a few Hollywood heavyweights that could no doubt murder the role. Luke Evans has proved to be a more than capable bully in Disney's live action Beauty and the Beast. You'd hang your accusations on the testimony of a filthy hag. No offense, Evan. Wes Bentley has made a career out of being subtly creepy. It's really hard to tell just from a reaping, but I think this is a very interesting mix. And James Marsden has no doubt nailed the love to hate him thing at this point. Do you have your child in that bag? No. I mean, yes, it's a child, but it's not mine. But my pick, described as the best dang actor of his generation by Vanity Fair, would give Kron the depth and intensity the character so badly needs. Why, it's Oscar Isaac. That's very nice. That's nice of you. Thank you. Plus, this would serve as a highly deserved do-over for his first foray as a comic book baddie in the much maligned X-Men Apocalypse. Let's just blame that one on the makeup and call it a day. You betray me. The director. So given this series is set in the far future and described by many as Blade Runner-esque, one would think the directors of those films, Ridley Scott and Denis Villeneuve respectively, would be the best choices. I say, not so fast. While Scott and Villeneuve would nail the futuristic visuals and complexity of the story, they wouldn't necessarily be able to deliver the proper kinetic action needed for it. This is a superhero film after all, and it should be nothing short of a fast-moving blitzkrieg of fun. Emphasis on the fun. And while I admit I'd be wholly interested to see what the Duffer brothers would do with this property, given their genius approach to storytelling and science fiction adventure on Netflix's Stranger Things, I think this movie needs someone at the helm that has experience in all the genres of film like this would mash together. That's why my top choice for director is Mr. Brad Bird. Trust me, there isn't a director going today more suited for a Spider-Man 2099 film than Bird. But perhaps you'll come with a challenge, eh? Have a surprise to get your call. Not convinced? Well, let's see. Has he done superhero movies? Check. <laughs> Blockbuster action? Check. Futuristic fantasy? Check. Sci-fi adventure? Check. Okay, now picture all those genres rolled into one and tell me Bird wouldn't deliver a tremendously entertaining Spider-Man 2099 with style and substance to match. You can't, because he would. Enough said. The plot. While Peter Parker's Spider-Man is a household name and uber popular, even amongst the most general public, this Spider-Man of the future is, well, not. You're Spider-Man, but you're, who are you? Are, are you me? And what's up with the costume? Is that a metallic fiber? So as much as origin story can sometimes be dirty words in superhero movie circles, it's kind of necessary here. The film needs to tell Miguel's story right, make the audience care, not just hotshot it to get him in the costume sooner. We, the audience, deserve the fully fleshed out tale of how Miguel's time working in Alchemax turned deadly and ultimately led his DNA to be rewritten with the spider's genetic code. Again, gross. With all of my powers, there's always another crook. Nothing I do makes a difference. And with so much depth to Miguel's story beginnings, flashbacks to when he was a kid with Xena and Kron would certainly go a long way in setting the stage for the present day in the film. Here, we get to see just how Miguel's conflict with his bullying half-brother reached its boiling point and why the stakes are so darn high when their inevitable showdown turns into a futuristic throwdown for the ages. Who is it this time? 
Legends, sure. While there are lots of cool stories that pluck Miguel out of the year 2099 and have him fight crime in the present time. Gabby, meet the Web Warriors. It's best this film stays in the world of Earth 928. Just think of all the things the writers can play with in a future landscape populated by superheroes and villains and all that's come before it. So let's leave the time travel stuff for the sequels. But alas, those are blueprints for another day. Look where you're going, old school. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. And there you go. What do you guys think? Would you watch a live action Spider-Man 2099 origin movie directed by Brad Bird starring the likes of David Castaneda and Oscar Isaac? Face it, the city needs a Spider-Man and you're it. If you give up, the legend ends and everyone loses hope. Have other ideas? Sound off in the comments below and let me know if you think there are any other properties that could use the Mr. Hollywood blueprint treatment. Till next time, stay gold, pony boys. See you, 2099. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.